Hi guys. <laughs> hello, hello. Excited to be here. I'm gonna wait a few minutes, just give a few people to get back on here. See a few more people popping in. Hello. And just so you guys know, I'm at a partner hotel today to do this special live. It's at I'm at La Meridian. Delfina Hotel in Santa Monica. So you may hear a few other noises. <laughs> I'm going to do my best to keep it quiet. Okay, so I think I'm gonna get started. <laughs> Hi, hello, I'm really excited to be here. My name is V. Um, I am the owner and lead yoga instructor of Beach Yoga SoCal. We are LA's original beach yoga studio in Santa Monica. Um, I've been, I'm excited to be here today. I am also a, um, somebody who has struggles with autoimmune disorders. I have uh, lupus as well as something called Sjogren's syndrome. And I also struggle with uh, interstitial cystitis and some bouts of inter uh, IBS. <laughs> so I actually just came from my uh, rheumatologist appointment. So maybe some of you guys can relate to that. I had some blood work done today and had to just kind of get in my, um, I go every about two, three months. So it was just that, that too, it just happened to fall on today. So. Just came from my rheumatologist, um, did a bunch of my blood work, things are looking okay. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm really happy to be here and just offer some um, yoga that is accessible for all of us. So I started my yoga journey about six years ago and it was when I was diagnosed with um, my autoimmune disorder. Lupus helped me manage my symptoms and it really helped with my mental health as well. Um, so I've been practicing for a couple of years now. Um, then I became a teacher and, you know, the goal was really just to help other people that were struggling with some of the things that I'm going through. Um, you know, I could just help even one person feel a little bit better that day. Um, you know, I felt like, you know, that would be more than enough for me. So um, that's why I practice yoga. I know yoga could be intimidating, especially in today's day and age. Um, it's hard to go into a studio. So I definitely aim to make this practice accessible to as many people as possible. So for today's class, um, we're gonna do some breath work. We're gonna set, set some intentions um, and then we're gonna move a little bit. I definitely want you to be comfortable. So if you're okay sitting on the ground, you can grab a blanket. If you have a mat, you can use one, but you don't have to. If you have a blanket, you can sit on a blanket. And if you're not comfortable sitting on the floor, then I would just grab a, t a chair and you can just sit down on a chair. Most of the things that we're gonna be doing today, you can do on a chair as well. Um, 
as we get closer to the end of class, we will might be getting up and, you know, standing up. But if that is just not accessible for you in your body, whether it's today or just because of your of what you're, you know, suffering with, um, don't worry about it. Don't feel embarrassed or obligated at all to stand up. <laughs> you can stay seated and just use the, the hand gestures that um, I'll be doing. So you'll still get some of the benefits of the practice um, without needing to, you know, put any pressure on your joints or anything like that, because I don't want anybody's joints to be achy. <laughs> that happens to me. So I want to be mindful of that. Um, and a couple of other tips, if you have like a, like a, if you do have you ever tried yoga and you have some blocks laying around, you can grab blocks. If you don't have any blocks, you can grab like a textbook or something like that. That's also a really nice, um, modification you can use if your wrists are bothersome or, and you know, anything like that, that happens. So, um, other than that, I think we're going to get started. Okay. <laughs> so, and again, if you have any questions about anything we're doing or, you know, something doesn't feel right to you, please, please, please just write it down in the comment section. Um, once I'm done with the movement and breath work part of class, I will take a, couple, a little bit of time to uh, go into the comment section and answer any questions that you have. Um, so yes. Okay. Awesome. So enough talking. Let's get started. So today I want to start with, um, a breathing exercise. It's called breath of joy. The reason I love this exercise so much is because it completely shifts my mood. So sometimes when I wake up in the morning, it's just like, I don't want to get up today, right? Like all the things I'm, I'm dealing with all my symptoms. I'm exhausted. Even though I slept eight hours, like why am I still tired? Um, I deal with dry, dry throat issues or dry nose or like I have a headache for no reason, right? So like whatever it might be. Um, sometimes it can be hard to get out of bed and I completely understand that. So Breath of joy is a three-part breath. It's three inhales and one big exhale, and it really impacts your mood. And you can practice this at any time. So if you're like waking up in the morning, you're not feeling so well, you could try breath of joy. If you've got, you know, in the middle of your day even, you feel that like two, three o'clock feeling, like sometimes six o'clock feels impossible to get to. So if you're feeling like that at like two, three o'clock, you can do a couple of rounds of breath of joy. Um, and I promise it will completely shift your mindset and help. It even makes me feel more energized. So it should help you get through, um, you know, a rough patch in the day if you're having it. Um, I may glance at my phone every now and then. Um, it's only to keep track of my time and because I don't want to forget any of the important information that I'm sharing with you. And again, my memory sometimes can fail me because of the lupus. So um, just want you guys to know that. So right now, I want you to either sit down on a chair. So if you want to be seated in a comfortable chair, go grab a chair, have a seat there. If you want to sit on the ground, you can sit on the ground. You can also do this standing up. And so I'm going to step back. I'm going to demo it for you, okay? Okay, so the way that breath of joy works, as I mentioned, it's a three-part breath. So you take three inhales, and then we exit with an exhale. So let me show it to you. So we start with our hands at the side. You'll take a deep inhale. Then you'll bring your hands in, take another inhale. Then you bring your hands up, another deep inhale. And then we exhale and we let go. And sort of that like ha noise that I made at the end, it's, it's just this idea, this intention of release, of just letting go of things that are not making you feel good, right? So I'll show it to you again. It's an inhale, 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 exhale. Okay, so that's the pattern. Um, you don't have to use the same hand gestures as me. You can have your hands coming out or up. And, even if you're sitting down, you can kind of do the same thing. So if you're sitting down in your knees or even in a comfortable seat, you can still do the same practice, right? So it's <sighs> okay. So we're going to do 10 rounds together and I'll keep track for you. Um, and again, you take the position that works best. Okay. So ready? If you want to close your eyes, you can even close your eyes once you've gotten the hang of it. All right. So get in your comfortable seat. First, let's just take a deep breath in. Go ahead, take a nice deep breath in through your nose. And then open the mouth side out. <sighs> Great, now we'll move into that breath of joy. So take a nice deep inhale. 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 Exhale. <sighs> inhale. Inhale, inhale, 
exhale inhale 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 exhale inhale 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 exhale breathe in breathe in breathe in exhale inhale 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 exhale inhale 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 exhale inhale 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 exhale breathe in breathe in breathe in breathe out breathe in breathe in breathe in breathe out inhale 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 exhale inhale 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 exhale breathe in breathe in breathe in breathe out breathe in breathe in breathe in breathe out one more inhale 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 exhale you can slowly just come back to your natural breath whether you're sitting down or you're standing up take a couple of breaths and just start to notice and observe how you're feeling Maybe you notice a little bit of a shift in your mood. Maybe you feel the heart beating fast, right? Maybe you feel a rush of energy, all good things. So wherever you're feeling now, I want you to take that sensation and I want you to just lay down onto your back nice and easy. Just super simple, guys. Right? I'll come over here and I want you to just lay down on your back. So I'm going to stay seated because I want to make sure you guys can see me and everything, but I just want you to lay down. Nice and comfortable. You can bring your legs out to the side. And then I want you to just place one hand on your belly and one hand on your heart. And we're gonna just take a moment to check in with ourselves. If you, it feels comfortable for you to close your eyes, then I invite you to just close your eyes here. One hand on my heart, one hand on my belly, and you're laying flat on your back. But you can also do the seated. <laughs> I just wanna make sure everybody has options. Um, so you're gonna take that seat. Hand on your heart, hand on your belly, close your eyes. And again, connecting back to the sensation that you're feeling after breath of joy. And then with your eyes softly closed, with your hand at your heart, with your hand on your belly, I just want you to take a moment and set an intention for your practice today, okay? What brought you out here? How is it that you wanna feel? Your intention can be something as simple as you wanting to feel peace, or maybe it's something very specific that you're going through right now, and you know you want to help alleviate that. Whatever that intention is, you set um, set it with gratitude. Okay. This moment here that we take to sort of settle down and just be the intention is to just clear our heads, right? To get out of our mind. So. You have the ability here today to be with community. That's something to be grateful for. Um, laying down, taking the time to nurture your mind and body. That's also something to be grateful for. And maybe you can think of just one more thing in your life today that you're grateful for. And then from the hand on the heart and hand on the belly, I want you to just place your hands maybe on a place that you're struggling with. For example, a lot of my chronic pain, my arthritis, sometimes is in my knees, okay? I deal with it in my joints, in my wrists, and my low back. Um, and then sometimes I have a day where, you know, the knees are really bothering me. So whatever the part of the body is and maybe you want to just focus some energy on, while you're laying down on your back, if you need to bend your knees, you could place your hands on your knees. You could place the hand on the belly if the belly might be bothering you. Uh, maybe the throat is feeling a bit dry, right? 
whatever it is, one hand, both hands, place your hands on the area that you want to nurture, that you want to send breath to. And then we're going to take five rounds of deep breath. So my knees are a little achy, so I'm going to do my knees. And I'm going to seat. I'm going to sit because that's comfortable for me. And you're going to close your eyes again, again, if it's comfortable. And then take a nice deep breath in. And then we're going to hold the breath and I'm really going to focus in on the part of the body that you want to nurture. And then as you exhale, you're just thinking about the breath entering that area. So for me, I'm breathing into my knees. Let's do four more. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. And as you're breathing in, you're breathing in love, compassion, gratitude, abundance. And as you're breathing out, you're breathing away fear, uncertainty, doubt, pain, discomfort. And then as you breathe back in again, breathing into your belly, into your heart, but also into that part that needs that extra love, that extra nurturing. And as you breathe out, you relax the shoulders a little bit more. You let the hips grow heavy. You get grounded into the earth or the ground or your floor. <laughs> One more deep, intentional breath. Breathe in. And I'm sending all the vibes to my knees as I breathe out. Good. And then from that breath work, I want you to either come up into a comfortable seat, okay? So everyone's just going to cross their legs. Or you could be on a chair here if the chair is more comfortable for you. And then we're going to just work on the spine a little bit, okay? We want to lubricate our spine, especially if we're struggling with any arthralgia or arthritis or, you know, osteoarthritis, any inflammatory disorder here. The joints are definitely affected. So place your hands onto your knees. Palms are facing down. And I want you to just start by bringing your heart forward away from the body. And I want you to look up at the sky or the ceiling. Then I want you to start rounding the spine in like you're making a C shape with your spine, right? So you scoop the belly in like so. Maybe you can tuck the chin towards your chest. I'm gonna demonstrate the other way too so you can see my, my body and my spine moving. So you're sitting up nice and tall. On the inhale, I bring my heart forward. I elongate the tail. I open my throat, I look up. And then take a breath here. And then on the exhale, I begin to round my spine. I'm scooping my belly inward, bringing my navel in, and tucking the chin towards my chest. And then thinking about the spine, starting at my sacrum at the base of my tail, I lengthen. I send the heart forward, open my throat up by looking up, and then come on back in, starting at the crown of the head. Tuck the chin in, round the spine, and scoop your belly. And then just start that a little couple of times. You can go faster or you can go slower, depending on how you're feeling today, right? A couple of rounds or cat-cow always make me feel good, make me feel taller. They make my joints feel more fluid. When I was first diagnosed six years ago, I had so much more rigidity and pain in the joints. And yoga was much uh, helpful with that. Helping me create space, helping me create some lubrication. Good, so you could do that a few more times here, front and back. Maybe try three more rounds. And then you're gonna come back to this comfortable seat and you can switch the crossing of your legs. Remember, you could also be on a chair here, okay? No reason to have to sit on the ground if that's not comfortable for you. Let's switch the crossing of your legs just to mix it up a bit. 
And then we're gonna do a, a couple of twists. So I just want you to bring your arms out to the side and think of yourself as like a cactus, right? So make some cactus arms here at about 90 degrees. Good, and remember, this is gonna be wherever it looks right for you. And then we're just gonna go side to side a couple of times. And we're just focusing in on the mid back, okay, and the upper back here. As we keep our hips grounded down and we try to keep our arms here at about 90 degrees, going side to side. For five, for four, for three, for two, for one. And then we'll do a few side bends. So you can bring your right hand down, reach up and over with your left. And then the left hand comes down to the ground, reach up and over with your right. And then see if you can just sort of go side to side here. Back and forth a couple of times. The spine moves in six directions, right? So we went forward and back. We went side to side, and then we twisted. So we want to try to get that spine moving at least once a day when you wake up out of bed. That's usually when I'm most rigid. But, you know, for you, it might be different. Sometimes maybe you're more rigid at the end of the day after lots of movement, after walking around, right? So then you wanna just give some time for some deliberate intentional movement to just nurture the body. It also helps to build a connection to the body. Take one more round here. Inhale, exhale. Inhale and exhale. Very good. Okay, so now from here, we're gonna see if we can come to a, a standing position. Now, if that's not comfortable for you, you could stay seated onto your on your chair, okay? So I just wanna give everybody options. But if you're ready to stand up, now that we've worked through the spine a little bit, we've done some breath work, we could come to a comfortable standing position and we'll do a little bit of uh, you know work standing up. So wherever you are, you can come to the top of your mat here, okay? And I'm gonna keep wasting you. So I want you to come to the top of your mat and you're gonna just reach your arms up and take a nice stretch. Palms can come together here. Take a nice stretch up here. Look up, maybe open that throat again. Good, and then I want you to just start to fold forward, okay? Keep your knees bent, bent your knees a lot as you fold forward. And you can just reach, let go of the arms, let go of the neck. And then nice and slowly push into your feet come all the way back up, reach your arms over your head, open the heart, open the throat, and then start to fold back down, bend your knees significantly, and release, let it go. And we come on back up. Just this simple, super simple movement of this full body extension, and then you hinge from the hips, come forward, release the hands, Release the neck and let it go. Inhale as I come up. Arms reach over my head. Palms together. Open the heart, open the throat. Forward fold, hinge from your hips. Come all the way down and let it go. One more round, inhale, come all the way up. Palms to prayer over your head. Open the throat, open the heart. And then come down, hinge from your hips slowly to fold. And then once you're folding here, whether you're seated or on the chair or standing, grab the opposite elbow and just sway a little side to side. Use your breath, inhale and exhale as you're going. And then you'll place your hands onto the shins. I want you to push into your shins. Keep a still bend in the knee. Find a nice flat back here. So the spine is nice and long. You're looking straight. You're stretching and lengthening your spine. And then we can come back to fold. Bend your knees. Release your hands. And rock and sway side to side.
Good. And then you're going to slowly come all the way back up. I'm going to turn my body so you can see me here. Keep your hands up over your head, okay? And then go ahead and bring your hands to your hips. And I want you to take your left foot and I just want you to step it back, okay? And that'll create a nice bend in your right leg. Your back foot can be about 45 degrees, okay? So it looks like this, my stance. My hips are evenly squared, okay? And I bend my front knee generously. So we're in this warrior one position. Make it reach your hands up. I just want you to feel your power here, okay? I'm gonna turn again so you can see if you want a better uh, view of that. So I've got my front knee bent, back knee at about 45 degrees, hips are square, I'm reaching my arms up, okay? Deep breath here, staying for the exhale, okay? And I just want to feel the power of this pose that I'm in. I want you to think about something that makes you feel strong, something that makes you feel motivated. And I want you to channel that strength here in this pose, okay? Whether the pose is feeling icky in your body, feels good in your body, you know, the body is just communicating. It's just letting you know, it's giving you feedback. We can choose how to respond to that feedback, right? Deep breath here, let it go. And then you're just gonna bring your hands back to your hips, keep a nice bend in that front leg and come back to the front of your mat. Feet are about hip width apart. And you're gonna switch. I'm gonna go ahead and step my right foot back here. It's about 45 degrees. I'm gonna bend my front knee as much as I can. And I'm gonna reach my arms up again. And I want you to reach through your fingers, okay? Tuck the belly in, keep the hips square, okay? Sometimes the hip may wanna come back a little bit. A little bit is okay, but try your best to keep them level and square. Reach your arms up, come back to that thing that makes you feel strong. I even want you to make a fist here. Make a fist with your hands. Squeeze that fist together and think about what that is, that moment of strength. Take a deep breath in, deep breath out. Bring your hands back to your hips, step it forward. Let's do that two more times, a little bit faster. Step your left foot back, 45 degrees. I'm in this warrior one position. Reach the arms up, squeeze your fist, breath in. Breath out, hands to my hips, I step forward. Then I step back with the opposite leg, front knee is bent, warrior one. Reach up, squeeze your fist. Hands to my hips, step it forward. Okay, one more time, step it back. Whoops, <laughs> warrior one with my hands and fist. And noticing even maybe once we repeat it a couple of times, it gets a little bit easier. Hands to your hips, walk forward, and then step it back. Arms up, make a fist. And then hands to my hips, and then step it back forward. Good job. And then once you come to that front of your mat, just bring your hands out to the side. Spread the fingertips wide, feet are hip width apart. Okay, find this nice tall stance in your spine. Take a breath in, take a breath out. Now we're gonna try chair pose. So I want you to bend the knees generously like you're squatting down and you reach your arms up. So from the side, looks like this. Bend my knees, arch my low back, keep your spine long, reach your arms up. This is another pose of strength, okay? We're using our core. We're lengthening the top of our body and we're grounding into the bottom half of the body. You can even do a little dance, we'll call it a chair dance. So I go side to side with my arms just to kind of distract a little bit from how much my quads are working, right? Just five more seconds, five, four, three, two, one, good. Come back to that full body extension. Take your hands over your head, and we're gonna fold again. Hinge from your hips, start to fold. Let the hands come down, and then you can sway again side to side. Good, and then wherever you are here, I want you to just bring your hands onto the ground, bring your knees back down onto the ground. 
So this is a tabletop position here, right? We're on our hands and knees. This could possibly not be comfortable for everybody. So I just want you to be mindful of, the, of yourself. You can modify by making fists with your hands so the wrists don't bother you, especially if you have some you know, arthritis issues on the wrist. So just make a fist with your hand instead here. If the knees are troublesome at all, you can take your mat and you can double up your mat here. Okay, it adds cushion. You can also grab a blanket, put that under your knees. Hands are underneath my shoulders in line and the knees are in line with my hips, okay? So I could put maybe even like a cup on my back <laughs> if I wanted to. You could tuck your toes. We're gonna come back to some of that spine work we were doing. This is the same similar, but it's just like a different plane. So with the fist here, you can start to round the spine, make that C shape again, okay? Scoop the belly in. And then lift the tail, drop the belly, broaden the shoulder bones, shoulder blades, I meant. <laughs> Let the heart come forward, open the throat, look up. All right, and then come back to round. And then drop the belly. Round, scoop it in. Drop the belly. Good, now we're gonna twist a little bit. Keep the fist if you want. Reach your right arm up. And then switch it to the left. Right arm. Left arm. Right arm's gonna reach up. Then it's gonna reach back and we're lubricating the shoulder joint here. Bring it back here. Opposite arm reaches up, reaches back, and then comes back down, right? One more time, make a circle, and then switch. And then my favorite pose of all time, child's pose. You can go ahead and start to bring your hips down towards your heels. If that's not comfortable, you could put a blanket here in between your legs. Walk the hands in forward and spread the fingers wide take up space, okay? If your head doesn't come down to the ground, you can take a pillow and put it there. You can also stack your hands like that and put your head down on your hands. Just a couple of moments here. Child's pose is great because it um, changes the direction of the blood flow, kind of like an inversion. Um, and then that, again, is another great way to shift energy, shift mood. Okay, sometimes I wake up in the morning and I'll just be in my child's pose for like 10 minutes. <laughs> or at night before you go to bed, especially if you have trouble staying asleep, that's another really good place to go. So just be in that child's pose, okay? So take a breath here, inhale. Exhale to release and let it go. All right. So those are some really simple, basic yoga poses and postures that you can do that I use in my day to day just to sort of help me, you know, cope with some of the stuff that I might be going through. Um, we didn't do too much. <laughs> it's, it's, it's uh, you know, a half hour goes quickly in yoga. But I just wanted to do enough so that you could see that it's a really great tool to incorporate into your day to day. Um, and there are instructors out there that can make it accessible to you. So that's what's most important. Okay. I, I think in this mainstream yoga world, you know, we get carried away in what it looks like, right? Or what the pose looks like or how I look doing the pose. But it isn't about that. It's honestly about how you feel in the pose. Okay. And there's poses for everything, specific poses for your stomach. The IBS, if you're feeling gut issues, like twisting, oh my God, twisting will help your gut. It helps your digestion, you know? So, and then like, if you're feeling weak, do a strong pose, like warrior one or chair, right? It's counterintuitive at first, because you want to be, you like don't want to do these things when you're in pain, or you don't want to do that stuff when you don't feel good. I have been there, trust me. But if I can just make that little shift that day, turn the switch on, be like, no, like I want to participate in life. I deserve to participate in my life, you, which you do. We all do. Um, and so if you can, can get, kind of muster that up there um, and, and just get into that strong pose, um, I always say two minutes of yoga 
three minutes of yoga, five minutes of yoga is better than no yoga, okay? Whether it's Breath of Joy, whether it's Warrior One, or you know, you wanna talk to me, I'm here. I also offer coaching for autoimmune um, patients just to kind of help us find balance in our lives. So when I was first diagnosed, I couldn't do much. And um, now here I am living my life. I have a husband, three dogs, and I own a business, and I go to work, and I get to help people like you. <laughs> so, um, and you could do it too if I could do it. So, all right. If you, anybody have any questions, um, if there's any questions, comments, concerns, I'm here. Okay, we do have some questions. So let's see, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get into these. Um, do we have online classes? So our classes are actually um, on the beach and in person. So um, we don't have any online classes, but I think they should be coming. I personally have some online classes on my YouTube channel. My YouTube channel is V the Yogi. So if you just go to Google, I mean, go to YouTube, search V the Yogi, V-E-E-T-H-E-Y-O-G-I. -E -E I have a couple of classes on there. I have some yin yoga classes on there that you could do. Yin yoga is amazing. It's like very slow paced and it's all about like lengthening our muscles and, you know, easing into some poses. So you just hold poses for like five minutes and it's amazing. I read some stories along the way to distract you. So you can check that out. <laughs> um, I do, but no, unfortunately, Beach Yoga SoCal is only on the beach right now, as of now. Um, how long are the beach yoga classes? So the beach yoga classes are usually an hour. Um, but some of them are 45 minutes and some of them are 75 minutes. So it varies. Um, but most of them are one hour long. We have classes every single day, all week long. Um, next question, recognition. Do you have any recommendations for the best or simple poses for those experiencing some joint pain? Yeah, so that's, I think today, what a lot about what I did was like, was spinal work. And um, I found that most of my um, joint pain has been eased through spinal work. Don't get me wrong, I have to take my medications and things like that too to keep the inflammation under control. But when it comes to joint pain, guys, the name of the game is keeping it moving which again, sometimes goes against like what you actually want to do. Like I want to curl up in a ball. I don't want to move, but what the body needs is that movement. So like if the wrists are bothering you, move the wrist around a couple of times, right? Shoulders, make some circles with your shoulders, forward and back a couple of times. Elbows, get them moving. Arm circles are another great one, right? Just moving the arm around, other side. Um, so it's really the biggest key to the joint pain is the movement, okay? And I, I know that can be hard at first, but like literally up and down, you can do this sitting, I'll show it real quick. You know, if you're sitting down, move your knee up and down, okay? Side to side, make it easier for yourself. And also I would say the breath work and the energy work because breath is energy, right? So if the knees are bothering you, like I was saying before, we can hold the knees, we can show the needs. We love them like the body's hearing you. So you kind of have to have that conversation with that part of you. And first, accept. We don't want to be mad at the body that it hurts. So first, we want to show compassion and love for that joint pain. Like, okay, I hear you, body, right? The body's talking to us. We hear you. What can I do to help you? So whether it's the holding, the breath work, the movement, all of that stuff is so helpful. Um, and just modify, guys. Use blankets. Use blocks, right? There's tools out there to make the classes easier. Okay, what approach uh, to yoga has been the most helpful for you in alleviating lupus symptoms? Did you start with shorter classes or easier poses? Most definitely. <laughs> You're looking at the... Uh, this is not how I was when I first started doing yoga. I could not, I could be, I could not touch my toes. So that, that, I just want you to get an idea. I could not touch my toes. I was not born flexible. I wasn't a dancer. I wasn't an athlete. I literally only got into it for autoimmune purposes. And yes, I started off way slow. I was doing like 15, 20 minute classes, 30 minute classes. Um, as, I mean, as much as I want you to follow me on YouTube, Yoga with Adrienne, I will, I always give her that plug. Um, she's incredible. Um, she offers free yoga classes on YouTube and that's how I started. They're for all levels, they're easier, um, and they're not as intimidating as a studio. And I mean, if you're local to the area and you wanna come practice on the beach, um, I will let you just take 20 minutes of my class if that's what you want. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, you could try that for sure. Like I said, five minutes of yoga better than no yoga, right? So even if you're just sitting there doing the spinal work that we did today, 
that's fine, right? Even the breath work, all good. Journaling, writing things you're grateful for. It's all yoga, all different modalities of yoga. I was doing a lot of journaling um, at first to help with my mental health. Okay, let's see, let's see, let's see. Sorry, just reading this. Um, could I? Yes, you can definitely attend my yoga class if you've never done yoga before. I get people who have never done yoga all the time. So absolutely, I make it accessible to everybody. Ooh, how do I teach when I'm <laughs> when I'm feeling crappy or having a flare day? That is not easy. It's not easy. Um, I think for me, uh, the bi the biggest motivator is the fact that I believe in this practice so much and so deeply that often when I'm having a really crappy day and I'm having a flare up and my gut's not feeling well, I'm teaching makes me feel better. <laughs> um, it always makes me feel better. Um, whether it's the mixture of like the movement, the breath work that I'm also sort of doing, you know, even if I'm not doing it full fledged, I'm still getting some of that in there. So whether it's that aspect of it, um, whether it's that aspect of just giving back, cause giving back makes you feel good. Right. And we all have our, these own, our own unique gifts and we have all have our own stories, right? Um, your lupus story is different from my lupus story, which is different from his lupus story, which is different from her lupus story. And so sharing um, makes you feel better and it makes you feel more connected to people. So like when I'm having that day, one breath of joy, <laughs> gotta get the breath work in to shift the mood. And then just realizing and remembering that I'm grateful for the fact that I can get out of bed that day, right? That I have this body that's been given to me that can move my body, that can use my body to move and groove. And, um, I think a lot of it is though the love for it. I really love what I do. Um, in my coaching program, I definitely talk about, you know, focusing in on some things that make you feel happy and things that make you feel passionate. Um, because a lot of times flare ups and are a result of stress or unhappiness or like, you know, think of oh, the word disease. It's dis ease, right? If you split it up. So it's this dis ease in the body that's causing disease. So how can we be more at ease? Again, through modalities of journaling, of mindset work, of breath work, of movement, um, and gratitude. Gratitude is gratitude was huge for me. Um, okay, I think that about covers. Oh no 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 no. When you wake up, you're not feeling well. What's the best stretching you can do? Okay, I would say the spinal stretching to start off is awesome. Whether you're doing it sitting down, standing up, or in a chair. That's like, it's, it's the thing, the reason I like it so much is because it's not, it doesn't feel, it doesn't feel so complicated. It feels pretty accessible. So that is one of the best, best stretches in my opinion is doing that. It's called cat cow, um, cat pose, cow pose, which is like rounding of the spine inward, opening of the heart, right? Rounding the spine inwards, opening at the heart. So doing some of that is great when you're feeling like your joints are sticky. Um, and honestly, going for a walk, that's the other thing that I do um, in the mornings. If I'm feeling sticky or icky, I go for a walk. I have, I have dogs. I highly recommend getting a dog. <laughs> it helps me in many, many ways. Therapeutic. It's so therapeutic. And it also keeps me active. Um, so, you know, just going outside on the grass or on the sand or on the ground, even try it barefoot. There's something about that grounding energy of connecting to the earth and walking just gets the, the knees moving gets your body moving. And as soon as I get moving, the pain goes down. As long as I'm staying in bed and not moving, I'm, I'm in pain. My low back hurts, my knees hurt, my elbows hurt. So my neck hurts, it's, it's all there. Um, and now I think that that is it. <laughs> Um, so thank you so, so much, guys. It was such a pleasure to be here. Um, I wish I could have taught even more yoga, but I hope I leave you with some tips that make this class accessible for you. Um, and you know where to find us, Beach Yoga SoCal. Um, you can look it up online. Um, we are in Santa Monica. Um, and you can also practice with me online, Be the Yogi. 
Uh, it's my YouTube channel. Um, also, you can find me on Instagram, v.desai. I'm sure they'll give you guys my information. Please feel free to DM me, send me a message if you're having a rough day. That's what I'm here for. Um, and yeah, guys, namaste <laughs> and thank you. You'll be able to choose if you want to save or delete it. So, I'm gonna move. so I guess I can just end it. Sorry if you're listening and while I'm figuring out this technology. <laughs> I think I'm just supposed to end it. So I just don't want to lose it. Hold on. Yeah, what does she want me to do? Okay. We're gonna end this. I think that's the right thing to do.